Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War II, World at War. This is our Allied Let's Play series, and it's February of 1944. What's going well? Well, the Allies have already taken Iwo Jima, the Mariana Islands, we've already landed in the Philippines, and have Manila surrounded, and are driving in the south. So that's the good news story. The, bad, the mediocre news story is that China's kind of on the brink. The Japanese are pushing uh, pretty much all throughout China, and they're slowly wearing down the Indian Chinese forces in theater, uh, which is hurting us. And could lead to the fall of India if we're not able to stem the tide before too much longer. But that is a little bit further into the future, several months away at the earliest of them being able to really hurt us in any way along those lines. In better news, the Allies' landings in the Dutch East Indies have taken Sumatra, Java, uh, and also Timor from the Japanese forces, which has assume, we assume has substantially cut into their, uh, into their income as the only remaining oil facilities that they have left are on the northeastern coast of Borneo. In the really, really bad news... Uh, the war in Europe is going very poorly against the Germans. The Germans are on the doorstep of Moscow. The Russians don't have adequate supply, adequate headquarters. We're being overrun pretty much everywhere, and the winter is about to end. It's February, the next turn will be March, and so if the weather turns on us and the Germans can bring the full force of their air force against us, I think Russia may crumble in a few months, uh, potentially sooner. Uh, we've also invaded Europe much more quickly than was historical, and so we've got a substantial landing force in Spain, which joined the, uh, which joined the Axis powers, but was quickly defeated. Um, but we've had to fall back from a drive that was just short of Paris under overwhelming Axis pressure. And so we are falling back to the Pyrenees Mountain uh, front line in the hope that we can have better defensive positions there soon. The problem is supply. I can't seem to get supply far enough forward to really make a meaningful difference for these units so that a lot of my units in the Pyrenees are going to be in really rough shape supply-wise, and so that's sort of a... I don't know. I'm trying to figure that out. Um, yeah. I, mean, I could try and move this British guy forward here, and then I could swap these guys out. But then you start getting, you know, headquarters units just a little bit too far forward. Also, it doesn't really seem to make a difference in this case. These units still are going to be way low on supply, so. Anyway, let's go ahead and end the turn and see what March has in store for us. Partisan activity in China is disrupting Japanese income there, so that's good for us. Axis raiders are hindering UK convoys from the Sudan, Egypt, and New Zealand. America has developed amphibious warfare level 5. That's good news. Um, technology, production technology development had us a nice little breakthrough there, although it doesn't quite come uh, far enough. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like big parts of China are under the monsoons, so at least the weather there is cooperating with us. I can't quite see what things look like in Russia, so we'll have to see what that looks like here uh, in a moment. Meanwhile, our invasion of, uh, of Italy is, is being turned back. We've already pulled the troops out of Italy as well, uh, and they just the Axis powers just retook Naples. Although the one good thing for us is the fact that the, uh, the Italians have been removed from the war, so all of the Italian army forces are no longer in play, and that's just... Uh, I guess it's bad and good. It's bad because uh, the Germans get the income from Italy. It's good because... Uh, the Germans lose, you know, a huge number of units that had been on their side previously. Um, the only area where it really feels like we're doing very well uh, in Europe is on the uh, naval side, where we've destroyed the Italian fleet prior to the, the knocking of Italy out, and also we've destroyed pretty much the entire Japanese fleet as well. So the naval war is the one area that's going well. It's not going well in anti-submarine warfare areas. It's, it's going very poorly there, but uh, at least in terms of the surface, uh, surface areas, it's going okay. Meanwhile, a lot of heavy air attacks by the Germans here on the Moscow front and north near uh, Leningrad. Um, you can also see the Germans have V-weapons that they're bombarding England with. Uh, Germany has now broken through basically entirely in the north there. Um, that's a complete breakthrough in the north. Uh, really the only place we have a semblance of a front line left in Russia now is, is around Moscow, and, and that's tenuous at best. 
Uh, we have a couple of isolated units in different spots in sort of eastern Russia. You can see their resin just had its unit destroyed and fell. Uh, we just lost a core in front of Moscow and a fortification there uh, destroyed. We just lost Kalinin. Uh, that's destroyed. So we're getting into, into we're away from the winter penalties that the Russians uh, impose on the Germans' offensive actions. And now we are taking it on the chin. Again, Moscow's not going to fall this turn, but... Uh, maybe not next turn either, but two, three turns, that might be all we have left. Meanwhile, the Japanese are having some successful attacks in China as well. They destroyed the, I think it was an Indian unit in Langkau, which is an alternate Chinese capital. How are our fighters not flying in? Oh, they're under rain. So his Stuka's got to bomb our front line because the front line was clear, but the air units that were in reserve behind the front line... Uh, were uh, under under rain clouds, so they couldn't intercept. Just great. Okay. A lot of uh, redeployments here by different Axis forces. My really, my really only my only real hope at this stage, because the Germans get a huge income bonus when when Russia falls is that we can knock Japan out of the war. But I'm not even sure that that's possible given the massive size of their army. They won't just surrender. All right, a couple of German units are in bad supply situations, and so they're suffering attrition damage, which is good for us. It's still, now it's snowing during our turn near Moscow. Good thing I don't have any Air Force left to speak of anyway. So the Russians lost one, two, three, four, five units destroyed. The Canadians lost the 77th Special Forces. That was a bad turn. A lot of German subs there. Meanwhile, the Americans get some new tanks online. The Soviets get a new core and some maritime bombers or medium bombers. And the Chinese get an army, so that's all good at least. Uh, if we go to the reports, we can see here the Germans have 134 units. I think they were 129 last turn, so they got, I think they got a bunch of new ones. Not going to attack anywhere there. There's a couple places we could inflict some casualties, but probably not worth it. All right, this army here is isolated. So we just destroyed a German army in front of one of the alternate Soviet capitals. Oh, I didn't, I literally just clicked the wrong button. I did not mean to attack there at all. God, I didn't I, I didn't mean to click that. I wish my shock army could move a little bit faster south to take advantage of this out of supply German armored unit. Okay, we'll reinforce these guys east of Moscow. So resin fell. Hmm. These guys only have one level of entrenchment, so I'll pull them back here. I don't know. All right, these guys are a goner, too. All right, so we've got two new Soviet units. Pull them back here. Tenth Corps. Probably put it south of Gorky, maybe. I don't know, I'm just trying to think of where it makes the most sense to avoid, like, them flanking me. We'll put it in Gorky. 
Medium bombers with no fighter escort aren't going to be good for much. Leave the shock army in Moscow itself. I don't want to move anyone back into resin there. Okay. I don't think there's much else I can do on the Russian front, which is great. You know, I did move some British troops into Yugoslavia. How is that supply so low? They're like a, a hex away from damn headquarters, and they can't get any supply into these hexes. <sighs> Trying to fight in Spain is not fun. We'd actually have a better supply situation forward a hex if we move the front line... I mean, it's still kind of... Oh, no, that's open terrain. That's a field. It's not great. Five is bad supplies to begin with, but... upgrade their anti-air defenses. Okay, we'll attack those paratroopers with our armor. Pull that armor back. Swing these guys over. Damn it. I just don't know what to do about the supply situation in, in Spain. Maybe I'd be better pulling everyone completely back. Can't even upgrade my fighters down here. Well, the American fighters at least get to full strength, but. Maybe I should send these guys to uh, England rather than rather than Spain. That might be the better route to go. Or an invasion through, uh, invade Iraq, maybe? And get into southern Russia that way? Okay. I don't really want to put my battleships at risk of enemy air action at this time, so we'll pull back a little bit. Okay. I also don't really want to spend my money repairing European battleships where there's no real immediate threat of air. So let's hold off there for the moment on the... Let's go to the Pacific Theater here. On the Chinese front. These troops in the Lang Kao. Reinforce these. Hmm. Of 
reinforce these troops in the south. Reinforce these British troops here in front of, uh, or these Indian troops here in front of Kuching. Well, we can reinforce the 14th Indian Army at Pak Hoi, so that's good news for us. But yeah, I don't think we're going to be doing much in the way of any attacking in China. Maybe upgrading this unit because it's got the distance needed. I leave China with a little bit of money and some new and a new unit to deploy. So we'll deploy this unit here in the south. We'll also go ahead and oh, whoops for China they have 161 left. That's enough for infantry weapon level one army. So I'll take that. We'll get that in May. Uh, for the USSR, I guess we should also purchase whatever we can that can get there the, the quickest. So we can purchase two armies for the USSR. That means we've got two armies and four, or two armies, three cores, one special forces unit all on the way by the end of May. Assuming Moscow and Russia hasn't fallen yet. We do have those alternate capitals, so we'll probably still be around then. Although, who knows? The Germans can move so damn fast. Alright, so that's the situation there. Um, how do these guys have no supply? God, my bombardments suck. Alright, so we hurt their economy a little bit. I was going for the supply, though. These guys are also dug in level 3. It's giving me some chances to get kills, and they just don't land any. Oh, nice. The Marine Division here did get its attack value back. So did this Marine Division. So we've got two Marine Divisions ready for attacks with their level 5 transports. We'll put a third Marine Special Forces unit on transports and I think I'm gonna send them toward Okinawa I'm assuming there's still troops there I don't see anything can we fly recon over it well I Rather not get that far advanced and take kamikaze hits. Um, is there anyone around here who can fly? Let's we'll put these guys over here. Can they fly from here? Not long enough range. Yeah, so there are troops there. Okay. So in that case, what I'll do is I'll fly my transports over this, or I'll sail my transports over this way. So that we can get an easy striking distance of that army, but so that we're not in range of that army while we're still on our transports. And so next turn will be the landing on Okinawa. We also have two new carriers back this way. Uh, I should also, I think the Japanese have one or two more submarines left in their fleet. It says they have three warships. 
So I should probably screen these transports. Not with... I don't have a destroyer to screen them with, but... We'll set our aircraft to combat air patrol. Get them in close with the... Transports in the event that there's bad weather or other things around them that might prevent them from serving, adding protection here. So we have these guys surrounded on multiple sides, two escort carriers and a fleet carrier all set to combat uh, the enemy with aircraft. We'll also set this, we'll just set all our carriers to, to standard cap right now. I think that's a good idea. Special forces will attack there. Is that going to give them supply next turn? Because right now it says they have none. Yeah, they should have four, which isn't great, but it is something. Okay, we're going to move to take that port in the north. We'll reinforce these guys. these guys north. What's their supply situation going to look like next turn? Ooh, six. Oh, five. It's going to drop one. Great. Actually, let's swap these guys. So if I swap them, then this will be five, five, four. Not great, but it should be better than the, uh, than the Japanese have. Okay. Reinforce those New Zealand troops, I guess. Maybe. Don't I still have a, a tank division somewhere? Or did I lose? Oh, yeah, third marine tanks. So I'm actually going to place our new American unit here on the west coast. Because, again, if my strategy is to go for Japan, then I'm going to need a few more troops than I, I currently have in theater to get at them. So if we can get a second tank division that'll give us two tank divisions and three marine divisions, five divisions to go for Tokyo. It's probably not enough to win on Japan, but it might be enough to take Tokyo and maybe Osaka. I'm not sure. I don't know how many troops they actually have crammed in on the island. I think the majority of their strength is over in China. Um... Alright, so actually the these guys can get long-range transports, which is good. Then I'm going to go ahead and set these guys on amphibious. And these guys as well. And I'm going to try and make a stab ever so slowly. A British stab at getting to Brunei. That's an important base for the Japanese, I think, anyway, for in terms of resources. We won't have air cover, though. Our carriers are elsewhere, so we'll have to be careful with that. Okay. So, I know we didn't do a ton this turn. It's probably more passive than I should be. On the flip side of that, I also kind of think... God, I wish... All right, so I need to purchase new units. British don't have enough money to do that. Actually, real quick, research for the Americans. What? So they're at 576. They're researching 1,300 out of possible 2,700. Logistics 4 out of 5 is already being researched. Production is almost to level 4. I can't increase any of that. All the stuff over here on the right is already maxed out. We can we can invest one more in advanced fighters to work on getting us to level five. We're at three right now, but we're investing two chits worth. Meanwhile, tanks should be level five in the next turn or so. Anti-submarine warfare needs investment, obviously. Ground attack weapons would be good for our 
medium bombers and tactical bombers. I don't think this actually helps the carrier aviation, though. Advanced subs don't really matter because the enemy's fleet is not really... I don't know. I, I'm not really doing a ton of sub rating. I've got large enough surface fleets there. Long-range aircraft might be nice. But let's actually go back and let's see what we can buy for the Americans. We can even afford a new headquarters. Which is kind of tempting. What are we building? The Americans have one special forces unit in the queue. That's it. Could also buy one army and one corps. Could also buy some heavy tanks. Level four heavy tanks. Yeah, let's go for it. We'll need that heavy armor. I've got, I think, enough headquarters in the Pacific at the moment. And I've got sufficient headquarters in Europe based off our reduced size of our armies there. I wonder if maybe we'd be better off falling back toward like the Burgos line, form a line from Bilbo south then east toward Barcelona. That covers a lot more frontage, but our supply situation would be much better. Let's see what the Germans do to us next turn. If it's... Well, actually, these guys are going to be seven next turn, so that's pretty decent supply. Six at Toulouse, which isn't great. Uh, but these guys are going to be four and five on the flank, as opposed to probably easily stacking everything up to like eight or nine or ten from Barcelona to Bilbo. Just the terrain's not as defensible. That's the the trade-off. I'm not sure. We'll have to see what we do there. But I think that's going to do it for this episode. Um, kind of a lot in the air. I'm debating whether I even continue the series. I know a lot of you are, are interested in it continuing, but it, it does get a little bit grating when it's kind of... At this point, it feels like the European War is lost. And my resources are going toward trying to hold things together there long enough to allow me to win in, in the Pacific. Which is not as interesting, I don't think. But, uh, you know, we'll see. I, I still enjoy the game. Um, but I'm interested in your thoughts. With that being said, that's going to do it for today's episode. A little bit on the shorter end. We got one more turn in. Uh, and uh, nothing disastrous yet. The Russian front definitely does not look good. Um, not a lot I can do there. You know, I, I guess I can pull this unit back. He's going to die anyway if I leave him here. So there's no hindrance in, in letting them take that. Um, I'm trying to pull these guys out of this pocket here that I created, but it's going slowly. I might not be able to get them out. I accidentally attacked with the third mechanized. That was unintentional. Um, with their current location, they're blocking the rail lines into Ufa. So they are you know, hindering German supply in this pocket. You can see German supply is two, three, two, but their own supply is n next to non-existent. So that's a problem. If we can maintain our hold in this position for one more turn, if rain, bad weather, maybe more snow, a late winter uh, continues to help, we might be able to get this shock army south and, uh, and destroy the fourth panzer tanks uh, and then maybe open up better supplies for our own units to finish off these other units in the south. We'll have to see. But with that being said, that's going to do it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed yet another episode of Strategic Command World War II World at War. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'm out.